good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. For a while now, I've been wanting to upgrade my 3D printer so that I can experiment with higher temperature filaments. Uh, and given that there's a, an upgrade kit from the manufacturer out now that uh, supposedly enables temperatures up to 500 degrees Celsius, I thought that would be a pretty simple plug and play upgrade. Well, I think I've succeeded in installing the upgrade now, but the process was a lot less plug and play than I was anticipating. So I wanted to make this video to give you a high level overview of the process for the benefit of anyone else who may be considering doing this. And uh, I'm also going to upload a PDF of instructions to my website. Uh, if you actually go through the process, it's much easier to have the technical details in written form than trying to dig them out of an overly long video. Anyway, uh, my printer is a Creality Ender 5 Pro, uh, specifically version 1.1.5, which is one of the older ones, and that complicates the upgrade somewhat, as we'll get to in a moment. And the upgrade kit that I purchased is the Creality Spider High Temperature Hot End, which I got on eBay for about $75. Now, when the Hot End upgrade kit was delivered and I read the rather diminutive instruction manual, I was a little bit surprised that it actually had you clipping wires and making connections manually. Uh, they supply some cables that connect to the cables on the Hot End, but the original hot end doesn't have any connectors, so you have to cut those cables, and then the cables that they give you connect to the cables on the hot end that they give you, and they don't really connect to anything else on the other end, so I just clipped off the connectors that I needed and then soldered those to the wires that I had to cut to get the old hot end off. Uh, they provide some little crimp connectors that you can use if you don't want to solder, but I really don't trust those crimp connectors for an application like this, so I soldered everything and then wrapped it up with electrical tape. Uh, that actually wasn't too hard to do, even though I was a little bit surprised that it wasn't just something you'd unplug and plug back in. So the hardware upgrade wasn't too bad, but in order to access those higher temperatures, you also need to upgrade the firmware on your printer, basically the printer's operating system, which in its original form does not allow you to go above 260 degrees Celsius. If you want to experiment with higher temperatures, uh, you've got to upgrade the firmware. And that's a little bit challenging on these older printers. The newer ones, from what I understand, have a bootloader program that checks the SD card for firmware updates and automatically installs them when it's booting up. So. On those, you can just put the new firmware on your SD card, put it in the printer, boot it up, and you're good to go. On the older ones, not so much. That said, it seems like all of the tutorials that I found online for how to update your firmware on these older printers really tended to overcomplicate the process. You know, they wanted you to first buy an Arduino Uno uh, microcontroller development board and then download their source code to uh, upload a program to the Arduino that would then upload a bootloader program to your printer via the ISP connection, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Uh, so that you can then connect your printer to a computer via USB using the bootloader program, uh, and then you can use Slicer software to update your firmware on the printer via a USB cable. Um, so it's this big, long, convoluted process that we can actually simplify quite a bit. For one thing, instead of using the Arduino system, I just bought a USB programmer, specifically they call it the USB ASP or USB ASP. Uh, it seems to be the most ubiquitous one, although there's several other brands and models out there that all basically work the same way. Uh, it costs about a third as much as the Arduino Uno, uh, and it's basically this little device that's just a, a dedicated module for uploading firmware via an ISP connection. 
Now, once again, some of these online tutorials, the ones that mention the USB programmer instead of the Arduino, uh, would tell you to use it to upload a bootloader program to your printer so that you can use that to connect the printer to a computer to update your firmware somehow else. And you don't need to do any of that. All you need to do is use the USB programmer to update your firmware. So, high level process. First you install the physical hot end, uh, then you download whatever firmware you're going to use, and then you have to upload the firmware from the computer to the printer, which is what I'm going to show you now. So this is the USB programmer that I'm going to use to upload the firmware. Uh, just plug that into a USB port on this laptop and then this 6 pin adapter connects to the main board on the printer. Uh, make sure you get one of these that does have the 10 pin to 6 pin adapter. Also note that in order to make enough room around the 6-pin connector to plug in the programmer, you may have to unplug the cable that goes to the LCD control screen. Now, with the printer unplugged, I'm going to plug this in. And plug this into the computer. On the computer, by the way, I had to download drivers for the USB programmer, and then I also downloaded a program called AVR Dude, uh, which is a command line utility that allows me to upload files uh, via the programmer to the microcontroller. So, uh, at this point, I'm going to open a command prompt. And I'm going to navigate to the directory where I saved the firmware file. Output looks something like that when you give it the command to upload the firmware. Finish the upload, so now I can just unplug this, unplug that, plug my uh, LCD screen cable back in. And then set my printer back up, plug it in, turn it on. First time you boot up the printer after installing new firmware, you'll probably get an error message like that. So if you just go to reset the EEPROM, that shouldn't come up again. The other thing I found I have to do after loading this new firmware to get the printer to work again is to disable the hot end idle timeout. So if I go to configuration, hot end idle timeout, uh, now I can, I can hit disable timeout, but all that does is it zeroes the time. So what I also want to do is adjust this temperature to a higher temperature than what the printer can even reach. Uh, you know, after the firmware upgrade, this is supposed to be able to get up to 315 Celsius. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to, uh, we'll say, 316. Uh, let's see, and then I need to go store settings. Make sure you hit store settings so it'll save it to the uh, EEPROM, and that way it'll load the, the settings, and you won't have to do this every time you boot up the printer. Uh, now that we've stored the settings, we should be good to go. I'm not 100% sure what the problem is with the hot end idle timeout on this printer. Uh, in theory, it's supposed to be just kind of a safety feature where if the hot end stays at uh, a temperature above a certain threshold for more than a certain length of time without the printer doing anything, uh, then it will uh, basically turn off the hot end or, or reduce the temperature back to zero so that if you should happen to turn up the temperature to load filament or something and then you just walk off and leave it, uh, it won't just sit there hot forever. Um, the problem that I found though is it doesn't seem to recognize the time. Uh, you know, it seems like 
it thinks it's always been idle longer than the threshold time. And so any time the hot end temperature rises above the set threshold, it'll re-zero the temperature setting, which makes it impossible to print anything. Uh, and so I think that that's just something with this board that it doesn't have a feature to keep track of idle time. Uh, and that's my guess is that it's just an incompatibility there. Either way, you know, that's why I not only turn off this system idle timeout uh, by zeroing out the time, but I also adjust the temperature to be something that the printer will never reach. Because even just turning it off uh, with the time setting, which is supposed to work, doesn't always seem to work in this case. And again, that may be because the, the idle timer isn't supported by the hardware. Um, whatever the case may be, once I've got that setting turned off, the new, new firmware seems to work okay. Well, at this point, the printer seems to be printing just fine, and I'm certainly excited to be able to experiment with higher temperature nylon and perhaps even polycarbonate filaments in the future. In hindsight, there wasn't really any part of this upgrade process that was difficult, per se, but it was definitely a more involved process than what I was expecting with you know, having to get a USB programmer and upload the firmware via command line utility. So I wanted to make this video for the benefit of anyone else out there who may be contemplating a similar upgrade, kind of to let you know what you're getting yourself into and give you a high level overview of the process. Now, for the benefit of anyone who has actually committed to doing this upgrade on a printer of this vintage, I have also written up this procedure in a little bit more technical detail as a PDF that you can download from my website. Uh, and I'll probably try and bundle that or else link to uh, you know, all of the software that I had to download in order to do this process. I mean, the firmware itself, the uh, device drivers for the USB programmer, and of course the command line utility that I was using to perform the upload of the firmware via the USB programmer. Um, so, uh, my website will be linked at the end of this video. Uh, if you scroll down to the documentation section, you should be able to find the uh, upgrade procedure document in that list. Uh, hopefully, this will be helpful to somebody, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.